When I started to record this video, my neighbour started to prune his shrubs on the other side of the fence. Was he listening to me? Hmm, perhaps he was intrigued in what I was talking about. This is an update on the spy radio that is being built for me in some far-flung place. Hello and thank you for joining me once again on the this video channel. Uh, a nice sunny day. I found a bit of shade in the garden. Probably some two years ago, maybe even longer, I mentioned about um, spy radio. In fact, I, I published a video about spy radio and um, uh, that uh, got quite a few views. And I'll maybe come back to that at some time in the future. That was a real life story. And this is actually a real life story as well. The, during the Second World War, the outbreak of the Second World War, there was a radio known as the Paraset, which is a three valve transceiver. Probably better to describe it as a transmitter and receiver because uh, the transmitter was a separate circuit from the receiver uh, in as much as the transmitter was locked on a frequency and the receiver could tune around. And that was the convention in those days that uh, the transmitter and the receiver were independently frequency controlled. Um, it was the way things were. And at the outbreak of the Second World War, they needed a portable transmitter receiver that could be used by spies, agents overseas. It had to be small, compact, had to be effective, but it had to be fairly low power because of drain. And the Paraset was the first of these uh, transmitter receivers to be built and taken overseas into enemy territory. In other words, it was behind enemy lines a lot of the time. It was a way of communicating back to the UK. And it was entirely a Morse code. It, that kept the whole thing simple. It was a Morse code transmitter. The receiver had the capability of receiving uh, audio and it may have been used uh, to receive audio signals from the UK. But all the messages going back to the UK were sent in Morse code. And it was a very basic device. It was two valves, uh, 6SK7, which was a very common valve in those days. And uh, I remember 6SK7 when I was uh, a young lad building simple equipment. That was the receiver, two valve receiver. It was a reaction uh, a valve in the first stage, RF reaction valve. And the second valve was uh, an audio amplifier. Very simple setup. And the transmitter was probably even more simple. It was a single valve oscillator, 6V6, the famous 6V6, which I think is still around today actually. And uh, again, I remember using the 6V6 in my first 160 meter transmitter. So uh, yeah, it, uh, it's an interesting bit of history actually. Nostalgic as well. Anyway, there have been attempts to build uh, Paraset transmitter receivers in the past and in fact the RSGB have published a, quite an interesting book which gives you the history of the Paraset radio and how it was used and also the circuit diagram. And uh, if you're interested in it, uh, the, I think that, that uh, uh, publication is still in print. But I have um, been having um, built uh, a copy of the Paraset transmitter receiver. Now when I say copy I mean copy in it's very very realistic and the attempt to get all the detail right is is quite amazing. Um, it's been built in some remote location I can't really give you any more details than that. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> that's another secret actually um, but uh, hopefully it will appear this year. Now the attention to detail is quite remarkable. It's meant that all the um, hardware such as the knobs, control knobs, tuning controls etc have got to be identical to the original radio and of course a lot of these knobs, controls, etc. don't exist anymore, so they've had to actually be remanufactured. 
and all the components are genuine size fixed value components that would have been used in the 1940s. The coils have had to be hand wound. Uh, all the sockets, the valve sockets, are the original type of sockets. The uh, crystal oscillator socket is original socket and uh, the case has been uh, made to look very original, wooden case. And there's even a matching power supply to it. Now the power supply um, was needed because very often the unit would uh, be operated um, from 12 volts or other times it could be operated from the AC mains. Now, for the, those of you that are as old as I am, in order to generate AC voltage or HT voltage, you needed something called a vibrator power pack. And this is what the power set had, I think. It was a vibrator. Basically, 12 volts fed in, this vibrator was switching backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, and that generated the AC voltage, which could be fed into a transformer, stepped up to 230 or whatever volts it was. It's quite noisy, actually. It, you know, it was a vibrator and it buzzed, and I remember having one of those myself, actually. Um, and, uh, yeah. It was a way of getting an HT from a low voltage source such as a 12 volt source. Now here's the interesting bit, you can't really get working vibrators these days so what has been done is taken the old vibrator cases and built in a transistor circuit so that the original vibrator case is there and plugs into the power supply but the internal workings is replaced with solid state circuit. Quite intriguing, quite clever quite meticulous. If you're looking for your own spy transceiver then take a look at the Zigu X6100. This is a transceiver that uh, I use regularly. Uh, it gives 5 watts out on um, all bands from 160 through to uh, 6 meters and uh, it's very compact. It's got a built-in battery. It's got a built-in antenna tuner so it's quite happy with um, all sorts of odd wires that you want to connect to it. So if you're interested in um, a bit of spy work, take a look at the Zigu X6100. It's on our website. Tucked away in a cupboard, I've got the follow-on from the uh, Paraset. It's the B2 transmitter and receiver. The top section is the transmitter, bottom section is the receiver. This unit is not working, hasn't been used for many years, but uh, it is complete and so possibly could be got working. But uh, it's just uh, one of my sentimental collector items, the B2 transmitter receiver. So, back to the Paraset transceiver. It's capable of operating on 40 and 80 metres, probably operated on 40 metres primarily. And the, the plan is for me to operate this transmitter or transmitter and receiver on 40 meters and make contact with a station in France who will also have one of these uh, transmitter receivers identical to the one that uh, I'm having made. Um, they'll be identical in every, every way uh, in terms of operation, if there's any drift, there'll be drift, although probably the crystal control transmitter will be stable, but I get, dare say the receiver will drift a bit. There will be a bit of noise from the vibrator, etc. But the idea is to duplicate the kind of contact that would happen between the United Kingdom and uh, enemy-operated France back in the early 1940s. That's the that's the that's the a challenge. Um, it shouldn't be too difficult to do. The, the transmitter itself will generate around about three to four watts. Um, but what I will have, of course, is the advantage of a reasonable antenna system like a, you know, a dipole slung up between two masts. Not the sort of thing that they, the agents would have had in 1940. They certainly didn't want to announce themselves. So it'd be interesting to try to see how the unit can be made to work on a fairly simple like throw out wire error which is the sort of thing that uh, they would have had and the capability of the unit in terms of handling uh, a random wire is quite promising actually um, 
because in those days, um, separate antenna tuner units didn't exist. Well, they did exist. Um, 19 set had one, but generally speaking, the whole system had to be operated from one basic module. And in this case, the Paraset um, transmitter receiver. So I thought I'd let you know where we are at the moment. Can't give you too much detail about it, but I think it will happen sometime this year. And as soon as I get the, uh, uh, the radio, um, I will um, do a video on it and uh, let you have a closer look. There's a quote, close up look here. The serial number on mine is my call sign, Golf 3 Oscar Juliet Victor. Here we are. Slightly different video. Quite excited about it, actually. So, thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for viewing this channel. And uh, uh, it's, uh, it's uh, an interesting um, part of the hobby that uh, I'd almost forgotten about. Valves. And simple, simple unit. Simple three valve transmitter receiver. Quite exciting. But probably quite common back in the late 30s, early 40s. Anyway, you take care. And uh, as usual, look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye for now.